Howdy there, folks. This is Father Dugan Nine Thousand here, and welcome to another episode of Game Finish Trios, a series where I talk about the games I have played and beaten as part of the Hardcore Gaming 101 Forums Game Finish Challenge. Carrying on from last week, this is another video in which we wind down the games that I originally played and wrote about back in 2021. There's only five games to go, uh, three of which we'll do this week, and the final two will be left for the next video next week. I wouldn't necessarily say these are special games that'll cap off the year in a grand and noteworthy fashion, but they are quite cool games that I enjoyed, and if you decide to check them out, I hope you enjoy them too. Today's games were originally logged from the 15th to the 23rd of December 2021. Adventure Time! Hey Ice King, why'd you steal our garbage? For the Nintendo 3DS. WayForward is a developer that exists and that I have mostly never really been that keen on. I've played quite a few of their games and while I can appreciate that they're well-made games with lovely visuals and often nice music, they haven't really done anything for me. I bring all that up to say that after playing their first Adventure Time game, I've finally found a game of theirs that I wholeheartedly like. This is a straightforward action platformer, very much of the late 80s kind of vein, swapping between a top-down overworld and side-scrolling stages, a bit like Zelda 2 or Rygar on the NES. There's plenty of exploration to be done, either finding items to upgrade your stats, or doing one of many mandatory fetch quests. I didn't really have a problem with those fetch quests, by the by, as the breezy pace of the game makes this go by quickly, and the conversations you have with many of the show's characters are quite amusing. Uh, in particular, the conversation that enables Jake to turn into a bridge is hilariously strange and off-putting. But it can often feel like WayForward only had so much time to make so much of a game and had to pad it out with these quests. It's fairly easy, I suppose, but that suited me down to the ground on this occasion. It was nice just going through levels, seeing the very well animated characters, and listening to the genuinely awesome soundtrack by Jake Kaufman. I wouldn't really call myself a Kaufman fan, but he does a stellar job here. I'm really chuffed to finally play a way forward game I just like and enjoy and think hell yeah this game after so many years of being quite ambivalent towards their work. So hell yeah this game! Is Lupin still flirting? For the Windows. This here is actually a fan game. It's a short visual novel based on the Lupin the Third series, designed by Alexis Royce, Sushi, and Camden Don for the Nano Reno 2021 Game Jam. Lupin's been caught by Zenigata, stuck in a train carriage with countless handcuffs on him. His only way out, as far as he can see, is to flirt outrageously with Zenigata until he can get the handcuff keys off him, or at least pass enough time to be rescued by Jigen or Goyamon. This is very much a game for the fans, particularly those who like shipping Lupin with the other male characters, and it's written quite well. I could easily hear the characters saying most of these lines. I'm also really fond of the artwork. Really lovely use of watercolors and the art style looks enough like Lupin while having its own style to be really quite attractive. Music's also lovely too. It's all pre-existing music that's been collected for this game, but they're all appropriate choices that help everything feel more cohesive in tone and style, despite coming from a bunch of different sources. There's four endings, which I managed to get as the game is actually quite short, 
One session takes about 20 minutes in total, and as it's made in the RenP engine, or is that RenPy? I have no idea. You can skip through the text you've already seen at turbo speed. It's quite a cute and neat game, and I'd recommend giving it a look if you're a Lupin fan. Arcade Spirits for the Nintendo Switch. This is a pretty cool visual novel I first heard about in Jonathan Holmes' 55 Hidden eShop Gems article, and picked up because I was, at the time, really, really quite fed up of games that demanded a lot out of you in terms of reflexes and complexity and all that jazz. You play as a character who ends up getting employed at a local arcade, and get many choices as you learn more about the arcade and the various people in it, how you manage it, and all that good stuff. There is the option to romance any of the characters, but you're also able to just stay friends if you prefer. I really appreciated that option, as I ended up making choices and saying things I would say, and I just don't feel inclined to romance my friends. I don't know if I'd consider myself asexual or not. That term does fit me, but all I can say is that I've never felt any sexual or romantic attraction to anyone I personally know. I did pick the option where I could romance someone if I wanted to, but then later got the chance to back out and took that. It was very nice of the devs to consider that. It's a cozy visual novel that I liked playing on occasion, and each episode goes quickly enough that you can spend a half hour session playing through an episode before taking a break to do something else. The pacing works very well for a handheld system, though you have the ability to save anywhere too if you need to, thank goodness. More games should do that, and by more games I of course mean all games. And with that, ha 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 ha, we've wrapped up another episode of the series. I hope that you enjoyed watching and that you'll tune in for the next video where we cap off 2021 mostly. Thank you so much, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day. <laughs>